Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, September 11th, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. This is episode 586 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Being a Hero opens with a strong Topan rating. Gentlemen of East 8th, not so much. Yang Yang celebrates his birthday while Hong Kong and Selena Jade welcome a new baby. Rumors swirl that new restrictions are coming to the Chinese entertainment industry. And Li Feng confesses to soliciting prostitutes as he's detained by police. We'll get to the top 10 Chinese web and TV dramas of the week as we do every Sunday. But before we get started, a happy belated mid-autumn festival to you all. This year it fell on September 10th, yesterday. Hopefully you guys had your fill of mooncake. Okay, here's what's recently premiered, two dramas for today and the past few days. There's Let's Meet Now, a romance modern drama starring Lu Yangyang and He Yu. It premiered on September 9th. According to IGE, the drama follows a love-hate relationship between a filmmaker, played by Lu Yangyang, and a competitive shooter, played by He Yu. The two were childhood friends and reunite when she films a variety show called Let's Meet Now at a shooting gallery. The drama is slated for 20 episodes and is available on IQ.com with English subs. Then there's Are You Safe, a modern drama starring Tan Jianchi and Rong Zhishan. It premiered earlier today. According to Baidu, it follows three dudes, the main guy is played by Tan Jianchi, who wander around the online world. Although their personalities are different, they all live by the same code of technology for good. Together they fight against cybercrime. Are You Safe is slated for 31 episodes and is available on YouTube with English subs. Alright, that's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, here's a drama that recently announced an imminent premiere. My Girlfriend is an Alien Season 2 is a romance modern drama starring Tasapak Su and Wan Pong. A couple of days ago, they announced a September 16th premiere. The two stars reprise their roles in the sequel, she an alien from Cape Town Planet and he a mere earthling. As they are about to get married, an alien rival shows up to break them up. My Girlfriend is an Alien Season 2 is slated for 30 episodes and will stream on Tencent. I will update on where to watch with English subs after it premieres. Moving on now, Toban opening ratings. I recently came across two. With a strong opening is Being a Hero, the crime drama starring Chen Xiao and Wang Yibo. According to this September 9th Senna article, it opened at 7.3. That's an average 7.3 rating out of over 76,000 ratings. As of today, it stays strong at 7.3 out of almost 136,000 ratings. The other drama to recently have a Toban opening was Gentlemen of East 8th, starring Zhang Han and Du Chuan. According to this September 7th Cine article, it opened at a measly average rating of 2.4 from around 2,000 ratings. As of today, it slipped even further, 2.2 now from 55,000 ratings. According to media outlet Wa, the drama set a record low Topan rating for Chinese dramas this year. It seems it hasn't turned out to be a good outing for the star of Gentlemen of East 8th, Chang Han, who also served as producer and screenwriter. I'd heard many compliments for being a hero, so the 7.3 rating was no surprise. I had not heard much about Gentlemen of East 8th until now. Those of you who have checked it out, is it really that bad? The aforementioned WA article quoted some netizens as calling it vulgar, unbearable, and dog-blooded, which is a Chinese term for incredibly cliched or tropey and exaggerated. And that's it for drama updates. Moving on, celebrity updates, and we begin with Yang Yang, who recently turned 31. Yang Yang's birthday is on September 9th. Recently, he celebrated it on the set of his latest drama, My Fireworks on Earth. And it looked like the crew totally did it up with cake, flowers, balloons, and even sparklers. It was a nice gesture from production. Not long ago, Yang Yang himself showed the crew a nice gesture of generosity. If you guys saw my update on it, he treated them to barbecue lamb skewers. It was enough for 500 people. 
In My Fireworks on Earth, Yang Yang plays a fireman who faces high-rise rescues and natural disasters. He stars in it with Wang Churan. Congratulations to Yang Yang. More congratulations are in order, this time to Han Keng and Selena Jade, who just welcomed their firstborn. On September 9th, Selena Jade took to Instagram to announce that she and Han Keng had become parents to a baby girl. She described it as the most incredible, magical experience she had ever been through. Quote, love in its purest form, end quote. 37-year-old Selena Jade's last drama to air was 2020's Love Yourself. 38-year-old Han Keng's was Legacy. The two stars announced their relationship in February 2018, their marriage in December 2019, and their pregnancy in May 2022. Moving on now, is the Chinese entertainment industry about to face some new restrictions? According to Chinese director Li Xiang, yes. Li, as his Weibo describes, is a director and film blogger. He is associated with Yongkang Six Point Film Company Limited. I looked him up on Toban and he has seven director credits to his name from 2016 to 2022. On September 1st, Li Xiang shared a post that got a lot of attention on social media. The post is now deleted, but of course, in this day and age, once something goes online, it's never really deleted. Li Xiang titled it, The National Radio and TV Administration Deputy Director Zhu's Recent Internal Speech. In it, Li claims that next year, some new restrictions may be coming for certain genres. He says to pay attention to the following six main areas. I'm just going to summarize because they're long. Number one, romance dramas packaged as military dramas will not pass review. Military dramas cannot use little fresh meat. Li then called out Xiao Zhan, Li Feng, more on him later, Lei Zhang, Yang Yang, Bai Jingting, and others for their military dramas. Number two, costume dramas, costumes, and makeup need to be serious and fit the era. Research must be done. Li called out the legendary life of Queen Lao for that. Number three, actors with obvious or abnormal plastic surgery are not allowed, especially not for military or public security themed dramas. No quote unquote sissy aesthetics and no excessive makeup. He didn't call out anyone here. Number four, 60% of all dramas should be realistic, not less than 20% should be about the historical revolution. Number five, variety show singers and dancers cannot lead dramas. Traffic stars cannot lead dramas with important issues. And number six, realistic dramas are strongly encouraged. Lee lists out some more guidelines. Among them, number seven got quite a reaction from netizens. It says CP or couple marketing is not allowed. As media outlet Wa reported, one netizen said, let's not live then, just ban entertainment. Another quipped, just broadcast history lessons then. By the way, Li's post comes on the back of Wang Hailing's recent controversial post in which he said that celebrities would no longer be allowed to have foreign or foreign-sounding stage names. Nothing has come of that thus far, and Li did delete his post, so make of it what you will. Li's post did stir heated conversation on social media, and so did this next story, the big celebrity story of the weekend. As Sohu covers it, police report Li Feng detained for suspicion of repeatedly soliciting prostitutes. They say when there's smoke, there's fire. And as it turns out, after a weekend of smoke, there's a huge blaze in Chinese entertainment. Earlier today, Beijing police shared a notice to say that recently they detained an actor surnamed Li, male, 35 years old, while investigating a criminal case, and that this person confessed to soliciting prostitutes several times. Minutes later, state-run media outlets People's Daily and CCTV News ran the story and revealed that this actor surnamed Li was indeed Li Yifeng. A few weeks ago, rumors spread on social media that a celebrity named Li He was detained on August 19th on suspicion of solicitation and released on September 2nd. Sohu Entertainment later reported that Li He is Li Yifeng's name on his ID card. Coincidentally, Li Yifeng cancelled a brand event in that period. However, on September 2nd, Li Feng did a live stream to say that the reason he couldn't make the event was because of the pandemic. He did not address any of the rumors. Subsequently, odd Li Feng things started happening. He was axed from CCTV's Mid-Autumn Festival Gala. 
Content related to him was removed from the Weibo accounts of China Supreme Court and the Golden Eagle and Huating Awards. Eventually, Li Yifeng shared a lengthy post to say that the rumors had affected him psychologically and professionally. He said, quote, In an era with an open and transparent legal system, who can escape the consequences of breaking the law? End quote. His studio also shared a statement to say that he has always acted morally and responsibly. They added that the online rumors surrounding his personal life are seriously fake and they would be taking legal action. Both statements were removed soon after they went up. And that takes us to today with Li Yifeng's detention. The aftermath seems to have come swiftly. Brands like Prada and Sensodyne have dropped him. Huating Awards announced earlier today that they have rescinded acting awards Li Yifeng won in the past. Streaming platform Mango TV have scrubbed his name from the 2020 drama Fearless Whispers, even though he is the star of the show. On that note, it's Sunday today, so time for the Top 10 Chinese Dramas of the Week, edition 138, September 11th, 2022. The data is provided by V-Linkage, a marketing consultant company based in Shanghai. They provide top drama charts every day. In this segment, the drama standings are based on their 7-day total points, beginning last Sunday and ending yesterday. We begin with the top 10 web dramas. The list is based on view counts on Yuku, IGE, and Tencent, social media discussions, and Baidu searches. Number 10, See You Again, the modern drama stars Hui Tian and Yuki Chen. Number 9, Discovery of Romance, the modern drama stars Qing Junjie and Janice Wu. Number 8, Side Story of Fox Volant, the costume drama stars Qing Junjie and Liang Jie. Number 7, Love Like the Galaxy, the costume drama stars Liu Wu and Zhao Lusi. Number 6, Gentlemen of East 8th, the modern drama stars Zhang Han and Wang Xiaochen. Number 5, Lost Track of Time, the costume drama stars Fair Sing and Zai Zilu. Number 4, Being a Hero, the modern drama stars Chen Xiao and Wang Yibo. Number 3, Love Between Fairy and Devil, the costume drama stars Esther Yu and Dylan Wang. Number 2, Immortal Samsara, the costume drama stars Yang Zi and Cheng Yi. And number 1, Chasing the Undercurrent, the modern drama stars Johnny Huang and Tony Yang. Chasing the Undercurrent is champion for the first time since its premiere. It garnered 579 points. Next up, here are the top 10 Chinese TV dramas of the week. The list is based on TV ratings and social media discussions in China. Number 10, Rising Lady, the modern drama stars Qing Hailu and Bai Bing. Number 9, Dividing Line, the modern drama stars Zhang Guoqiang and He Bing. Number 8, Beloved Life, the modern drama stars Victoria Song and Wang Xiaochen. Number 7, Brave Wu Ju, the modern drama stars Andy Zhang and Li Naiwen. Number 6, The Power Source, the modern drama stars Yang Shuo and Jiao Junyan. Number 5, Rose War, the modern drama stars Yuan Quan and Huang Xiaoming. Number 4, The Disappearing Child, the modern drama stars Tong Da Wei and Wei Chen. Number 3, O to Joy Season 3, the modern drama stars Maggie Jiang and Ora Yang. Number 2, Investigator, the modern drama stars Chu Yawen and Wan Qian. And number 1, 20 Year Life On Season 2, the modern drama stars Guan Xiaotong and Bu Guanjing. 20 Year Life On Season 2 ends the week with 520 points, making a champion for a second week running. And there it is guys, hope this gives you an idea of what dramas are hot in Chinese drama land at the moment. Tune in again next week to see how your favorite dramas perform. And that brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.